so this is my uh, update video uh, that I've got. Uh, I wanted to do uh, probably a few more videos while I was in hospital. Um, didn't really work out, uh, but I've got plenty of notes that I wrote down. So I'm going to use those as uh, part of a video or series of videos going forward. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much uh, two weeks tomorrow. So it's uh, Monday today. Uh, so two weeks tomorrow post-op. Um, everything went well, obviously. I'm here, uh, which is good. I'm at home, uh, which is a bonus. That was uh, a week tomorrow um, that I was discharged. So yeah, the discharge uh, went quite well. Um, it was uh, really sudden. Uh, my bloods were all over the place. Um, any of you who are on the, uh, the Facebook group will uh, might have seen a post from me. Um, so I was on the heparin. And that was to keep my blood thin uh, straight after the operation um, to make sure, or not necessarily make, make it thin, but uh, slow down the coagulation mechanism um, in a similar way to warfarin, um, but it was straight away. They were checking my levels all over the weekend. Um, it was all up and down. I was having four hour blood checks. I was having uh, boosters to try and get the, the levels right for the war, um, for the uh, heparin side, while they are introducing uh, warfarin, um, and obviously warfarin takes can take three to five days to uh, to take effect. So that was um, it's a bit of a slow process. So I was a bit frustrated near the end of my stay at the hospital. I felt pretty good um, considering the operation, and I was just re I was ready to come home, um, but. They weren't obviously going to let me go until my levels were right, which 100% agree with. Um, and pretty much late Monday night, so like 11 o'clock Monday, I had a um, blood test. Woken up early hours of the morning on the ward uh, to have another booster and my heparin turned up because the levels were all over the place. Um, and again, another couple of hours, another couple of hours, it was just... It, it seemed a bit of an endless cycle, but looking back, it wasn't that bad. It was only um, about a day or so of, um, of that. And then suddenly um, everything just clicked. Um, the warfarin obviously worked. I was on quite a high dosage of around 10 milligrams um, and that got up to two. And as soon as it hit two, they were pretty much kicking me out the door, uh, giving me my case and discharging me. So the actual discharge process was really, really quick because I didn't know it was happening. Um, I was making frantic phone calls to the people who were picking me up. So my uncle and auntie came to pick me up from uh, Southwest London uh, during rush hour, which was uh, entertaining, trying to do that. But no, they, they dropped everything. They came, came to pick me up because um, they didn't really uh, want me tackling a tube, rightly so. Um, so yeah, that, was, that worked out really well because for me, if I was, if I knew that um, the discharge was coming, it was it was the next day, and I probably would have sat around waiting, waiting, waiting. But it works out really well, so really happy, really happy with how that went. Um, and came back home quite late Tuesday. By the time I I got back, it was about eight o'clock, half past eight at night, and it just felt really, really weird. It felt weird to be at home. Um, it was you know a week to the to the date that I had the operation. Um, but yeah, I felt I felt good to be home. I went straight into my own bed uh, that night, and it was great. Um, I bought a new uh, new mattress just before uh, the operation, not for the operation, but purely because we needed a new mattress, um, and that worked out really well. Um, I, I saw I've seen some videos, and I've seen feedback from people where um, they're in recliners or, or lazy boys or on a sofa and are really struggling to um you know sort of get into their own bed for me um i think it's mind over matter i just knew i was going to get into my own bed um no extra pillows just my normal pillow and it was yeah it was a bit of a struggle to get out in the morning but i'd kind of been doing that on the ward with the hospital bed making it go flat using just the one pillow and, and things like that so i was really you know, fortunate that I was able to just jump straight into my own bed and absolutely no issues at all with sleeping. If anything, I've slept so well since I've come back home. You know, I didn't sleep well at all um, in hospital for various reasons. 
um, you're at different stages and I'll do a separate video or series of videos about the different stages of um, the operation and the ICU and the HDU and a general ward. But, you know, I was on the general ward from Friday afternoon until Tuesday afternoon when I was discharged and I didn't sleep at all. You know, my wife was bringing down like eye masks and everything else. It's just so noisy, even when it's the dead of night you've got someone coughing or spluttering, you've got machines beeping, and you're, because you're on the general ward, there's six of you in a, in a bay, or a ward room, or whatever you want to call it. So it's not, not ideal. You've got a curtain separating you, and I really didn't sleep at all. And if anything, for me, that was the bit of a detriment to my healing. You know, healing really well, absolutely no issues, but it was getting to that point when I'm thinking, I'm not actually here in here, you know, I need to get home. So yeah, as soon as I got home, slept really well. Um, I've been quite hot at night. Um, whether or not that's normal, I'm not quite sure. Um, woken up, not absolutely drenched with um, with sweat, but kind of um, a bit warm. Um, and it, it seems to have died down a bit um, since I've come back. So no, no real issues, I've been taking my um, temperature every day and sometimes twice a day and that's bang on exactly where it should be so I've got no concerns really there um, with anything on toward I think it's just generally the healing process you know I've got the big scar I've got three drain wounds um, I've got the central line wound that you can see that's healed really well um, and and that was in for quite a while um, because of the, the amount of bloods they were taking and things like that they wanted to keep it in um for as long as possible um but then say that last monday tuesday it was out um, and i was still having extensive bloods taken all had to be out of my right arm because of um the heparin drip was going into my left uh, so my right arm was pretty pretty bruised pretty battered um like a pin cushion by the end of it so um yeah i'm just pleased that you know that's kind of over uh, in general, coming back home has been really good, just being in your own environment. Um, I've got two dogs, they may make a bit of noise at some point, I've already thrown them out once. Um, but just being around the house with them, obviously my wife's been off um, up until today, is her first day back at work, um, so it's been really good to have her around. And we've had a few visitors to the house, so just being home, I've instantly felt so much better. Just being in an environment where... Um, you're not in a hospital, really. You're not in that hospital environment. And, you know, I'm still still relatively young. Um, as much as this is a major heart surgery, I've recovered quite quickly. You know, the consultant said to me on the Saturday, we would discharge you today if you were not on warfarin or needing blood thinners and to be in that level because your bloods aren't in range. We've got to keep you here. But, you, you know, you're fit, you're healthy. You've got no... Um, uh, issues with your bloods other than the not being at the right level for warfarin and heparin but I was healthy my lungs um, cleared were clear you know I was using them quite a lot breathing exercises so they were really really happy so to you know say being at home has really helped you know it's it's also a word for for the patients on that general ward you know I've written and I might go into a little bit more detail um, certainly for me at points after that Friday where I was feeling pretty good you walk you walk around that general ward with some of the patients who are quite seriously ill um, there was at least one gentleman that I was aware of was uh, palliative care uh, with a lot of other things wrong with him but obviously a heart condition as well and um, there was a couple of guys young lads probably I'd hazard a guess younger than I am um, who were waiting um, heart donors, but they were too ill to be off the board and back out um, at home. And and they were just sort of tackling it day by day. Um, and fantastic uh, attitudes that they had was just brilliant. Um, there was another gentleman on my, within my bay or my room, whatever you want to call it, um, was suffering from endocarditis, which I've heard a lot of, but never, never ever heard or seen of anyone having it. And he came down with it in early December and he's being told he's going to be there to at least April until they get all of the bacteria out of his body. 
And the thought of that absolutely terrifies me of being in that hospital for that length of time. And it's got nothing to do with the staff, nothing to do with the hospital. It's just a hospital environment. It's what, what more can you say? It's just, it's just not a, a good environment to be in. So I was really pleased uh, to come home, uh, really pleased to be um, back in my env environment and sort of just recovering, drinking coffee that isn't instant, which is, which is nice. So uh, yeah, that's good. I've had to really, really take it easy. You know, they tell you six weeks, take it easy. Because I felt so good, um, you kind of, you do get reminders that you've had heart surgery, you, you, um, your chest is still healing. Um, you, you get constant reminders, you overdo it. Even if I'm not lifting, you know, the big thing they say, don't lift over five kilos. Even if I'm not lifting at all, just by continuously doing things with your hands, even if it's like washing up, drying up, anything that's that constant movement, you do feel it, you know, after like an hour or so, you know you've overdone it and your body lets you know. So, um, yeah, for me, it's trying to get into that routine of uh, taking it easy, even though I feel good not to overdo it. Um, give another example. So yesterday was a, a Sunday. Um, went out for a nice breakfast with my wife and it was probably about a five, ten minute walk from the car to the restaurant and it took me a long time and, <coughs> excuse me, and I felt it afterwards, you know, I had, I had the walk, had breakfast, had to walk back and, you know, I had to have a sleep when I got home for about 20 minutes, you know, I think that's just the body's way of recovering. which is good. So I've got a bit of a uh, really dry dry cough. I don't think it's actually a cough more than <coughs> just like an irritated throat. It's not been too bad at home. It's if I talk a lot like now doing the videos, um, but certainly in a hospital, I think it was like the air conditioning or the air really uh, didn't help at all, wasn't conducive. So yeah, that was interesting trying to uh, to cough with with the pain. Um, pillow, absolutely 100%. I might, might go into a video of must have things, but having an extra pillow in a bed just to hug, certainly in a hospital, certainly in those early days with sort of coughing and, and trying to clear the throat, clear the lungs and stuff. It was essential just to help protect, protect that. Um, Kind of what else i've got up to speed quite quickly in sort of dressing myself there's been no issues with that which is really good um again it does take it out of you um just this morning i had a shower got changed and kind of had to sit down for for 10 minutes and you know so you've got those constant reminders from your body just to say you know don't forget you've had this heart surgery don't forget to uh just take it easy a bit um, so this is really my my first day um, on my own. Um, so wife says she's at work. Um, I've tried to write up a routine plan. Got a whiteboard upstairs, which I'll share um, in another video. Just stuff like walking, uh, making sure I'm doing breathing exercises, and actually more than anything, making sure I'm not just sat around watching TV, which is obviously like a really easy thing to do when when you're real. I know I need to take it easy, but also there's other activities I could be doing other than you know, kind of sat in front of the TV. So for me, that's you know absolutely, absolute key. Um, I'm trying to think what else that I can talk about. Um, really, that you say I I've got so many topics I'll go over. Um, I'll go over a bit more detail in individual videos and and things like that. But um, the ticking for me has not been an issue at all it was one of those little things that kind of worried me a bit it was in the back of my mind um i've heard people talking about it like how loud the ticking is how it took months and months and months to to get over it i woke up in the icu um trying to listen to it couldn't hear it at all um and it wasn't too much noise in the icu it's fairly quiet um you know 
everyone in there is like quite seriously not ill but recovering from serious surgery so it's fairly quiet there wasn't too much background noise and i couldn't hear it when i was on uh the hdu i was trying to listen to my headphones uh, with music through headphones and i was really struggling because it, it you know i had my volume whacked up loud and it just didn't didn't sound good at all um and i was just really bunged up with my ears so whether or not it's from the operation or whatever so i managed to uh, get some uh, bits off the the nurse clear my ears out and i thought okay maybe maybe now i'll hear the ticking but didn't uh, a couple of times when they were listening to my chest if i was holding my breath um i could maybe feel it more than hear it but not so much but certainly being at home definitely hear it now but really more than anything it's when i go to bed when i'm lying in bed and again i would say i feel it more than i hear it and my heart rate has always been certainly in the last year like a very bounding heart rate at times um because of the condition because because of the regurgitation um i could almost always feel it in my chest so it's a similar feeling to that but it's a more pronounced um and sometimes when i'm sat down and i'm leaning forward i can i can feel it and hear it but it really really doesn't bother me and like i said two weeks out and i don't notice it if i sit down in silence i can maybe hear it but for me it's kind of i, I think i've already tuned it out or it's kind of not ticking as loud as some people um, but that was one of my concerns so if i can kind of allay some people's fears um for me it really really hasn't bothered me it doesn't stop me sleeping at all you know i've always been an easy sleeper though so i'll, I'll kind of uh caveat what i'm saying with that i've always been someone who goes to bed when i'm tired and my head hits the pillow and i'm out pretty much within five minutes and it really annoys the wife she hates it that i can just go to bed and 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 that hasn't changed since the operation it hasn't changed i'll go to bed i'll lie there and i can hear it i can hear the ticking doesn't bother me at all doesn't keep me awake and i just go straight to sleep there's no other noise up in uh, up in a room i haven't tried to use fans or white noise machines or anything like that and i've gone straight to sleep it's been brilliant i can't ask for more um with that and that's just my personal experience i know a lot of people have had real big issues with it it's taken a month if not years to try and tune it out and stuff but but for me that hasn't been an issue at all and I'm really really pleased with that the other thing and i only remembered to do this yesterday funnily enough was to uh, feel my pulse which sounds really weird but before the operation and certainly for the couple of months when i was waiting for it because of my regurgitation from the aortic valve was so bad um, the pulse wasn't a normal doof, doof sort of pulse it was a shoo, shoo. and the prayer's my best impression i can do but those of you who have got regurgitation will know um, and it was so bad and I'd always get people to feel it and say look this is this is the the pulse I've got this is kind of part of the reason why I'm having the operation and I felt it yesterday and it was like doof, doof, doof. and it was really weird because you know I'd kind of got used to that sort of the regurgitation pulse uh, for so long so that was the first real sort of real change and saying just in general in myself I feel really good um, considering I can't do any uh, physical activity other than walking i can't really test try test drive the valve um which i'm looking forward to do to doing um as soon as, as soon as i've got that all clear from the consultants to uh, you know get exercising again but in general i'm not having any dizzy spells um which is really good you know it, it still could have happened after the surgery irregardless of the um you know the amount of oxygen going around or anything like that whatever was causing that pre-syncope um may have been eradicated with the valve but um could still be there from just sort of like the after shock or whatever of the the operation but i haven't had any of that um but i haven't really pushed myself so not too not too sure yet but to say in general i've absolutely no complaints with how how i feel I've got a scar, uh, which is a bit longer. If I'm not sure how much longer than my previous scar. So my 
previous operation was in 97, so when I was nine. Um, and obviously, it's quite a lot smaller then, so the um, so scar goes down um, a long way. And I've got uh, three chest drain wounds. Um, in my previous operation, I only had the two. And uh, so they those stitches were removed on Friday. Um, and another dressing was put over the top of the three until yesterday when I took them off. Slightly concerned just before taking them off because um, through the, uh, the dressing that was on there, there was a little bit of discharge over one of the, the wounds. So when I took the uh, dressing off yesterday at home, they all had a little bit of discharge, but it all looked like it was from the site of where the stitches had come out but they're all really clean. There's no inflammation, no redness. It's not hot, it's not sore to touch. They look really, really good. Um, so no concerns there. Had quite a bit of discomfort, bit of pain right at the bottom of the, the scar, right at the bottom where the sternum is. It was almost like swollen. And I was looking at it yesterday, it was a bit bruised, but it's not hurting as much today. So maybe I've just overdid it or whatever, but you know, in, in general, there's no, no real issues. It looks really, really clean, really good cut. It's a bit, um, I don't know the word they use, it's quite, a bit, it's not necessarily swollen, but it's, I think, where they've joined it at the top. Um, it's quite a big knot at the top of it, which they've said will just naturally go down. And it's made, obviously, the chest really tight. And the necks are almost from sort of there, and across to the chest um, I'm having to make sure I stretch that every day just to kind of give that full stretch um, across the chest because otherwise I'm kind of like hunching myself up uh, which isn't good um, so that's like really important they haven't told me to do anything but I'm kind of feeling that myself so I'm making a conscious effort of stretching out the chest one of the the biggest issues I've got um, from the operation isn't necessarily the incision and the, the broken breastbone um, it's the pectoral muscles either side so much pain so much um, tenderness and swelling and that was purely because you know like I mentioned in my original video I loved lifting weights it was one of the things I did I wasn't a you know a jacked guy I wasn't completely ripped but I had a decent amount of muscle on me and obviously they've cut straight down the middle of that and a lot of the the muscles gone back into the you know uh, retracted a bit so when I was in hospital and the doctors were coming round certainly my right pec it felt like it was really really swollen and really tender to touch and they just said no it's just completely muscular there's no issues they were checking it over um, and that has given me the biggest issue since I've been out so far mainly on the right side um, really sort of tender um, and I suppose it's no different to if I'd torn the pec um, in an in, you know as, a, as an injury if I was lifting weights or playing sport or something um, so that's kind of taken my mind off the incision and the broken bone um, but it's a lot of discomfort so um, I'm kind of just moving about throughout the day. So I'm sat in this chair now, it's a bit of like a rec recliner swivel chair type thing. And I'll do that of an evening, but then I'll sit in one of the other chairs, sit in a, on, on the sofa, sit in different positions, just because you kind of get a bit of cramp and it's a bit uncomfortable. But I say other than other than that, um, that's, the, that's the main issue. And it's kind of like the associated issue with shoulders and your back and your triceps as well, sort of down your arm. That's the main, main pain I've got at the moment. In terms of pain management, I might do another video just all on meds because so much to talk about with like warfarin and um, the other bits and pieces they've got me on. Um, but in general, um, I'm taking nothing for um, pain other than paracetamol um, as and when I need it. So I'm kind of not taking it until, unless I really need to take it. So the other night, um, when um, the chest was really hurting, like the, the pec muscle, I took um, a couple just before bed just to make sure it didn't wake me up in the night. But other than that, um, it's been fine. 
Um, again, I'll probably go into more detail about sort of painkillers, and certainly when I cover the, the the videos when I talk about being in HDU and ICU and general ward. But you know, for me, I don't do it as a like a badge of honour or anything like that. But I just don't like taking painkillers um, unless you know it's it's completely unbearable. You know, I'd much rather my body kind of deal with the pain, and I'm not trying to be some sort of sort of hippie wacky like alternative medicine or anything like that it's purely like if i've got a headache for example i'll tend to just ride it out because my headaches if i do get them maybe it's stress at work maybe i've eaten something or drunk something drunk too much coffee too much dark stuff whatever so i tend to make a few tweaks and it will go um so i don't tend to um take painkillers as a matter of course and it was pretty much the same when I was in the ICU. I had the, the morphine button and I was being told off for not pressing it. That's that's the crazy thing. Um, they were asking me for my pain levels and I was saying it was about an eight or a nine out of 10. And I was saying, look, you you know, you need to press this button. You can't overdose on it. You know, it's linked up to a, a monitor that only lets you um, do X amount um, every five minutes, every 10 minutes. But unless you're pressing it, they don't think you're in pain, so they won't up your dosage. So it's it's kind of that chicken and egg thing, and and I'm not I'm not a great fan of morphine. You know, we'll go into that. It's probably I'm not sure what painkillers I was on when I was um, nine back in the day um, for my first stop, whether or not it was morphine or or something else. Um, but uh, this time around, it was morphine, and I'm not a fan. You know, everyone jokes about with it, but I just thought it was. Just horrible stuff um really do it done whether or not it done something for the pain but one thing it did was just it knocks you out for 10 minutes and you come back around and then it's time to press it again and you're just in that sort of vicious cycle so i wasn't a fan didn't really take it and uh say now being at home i've got access to say paracetamol but i don't don't take it unless um you know chest is the main main one that's gonna you know, trigger um, taking any sort of paracetamol. So, but again, th this is my own personal sort of preference. It's my own personal video. You know, I'm trying to uh, let you know how I'm getting on, what's going on. And I'm not trying to advocate doing this operation without painkillers. You know, I certainly took morphine. You know, I had morphine, I've taken paracetamol and, and whatever else. So take it if you need it. I'm not judging anyone who does it. You know, absolutely 100% you need to take what you need to take me personally not necessarily you know a fan of just popping pills uh, for no reason so yeah that a uh, couple of things I've done since uh, the operation I bought myself a, a blood pressure kit so like a monitor to monitor that um, and a thermometer a new one just that I know is accurate and to do that so what you'll find, um, certainly for me anyway, when I was on the general ward, twice a day, they were doing sort of blood pressure, temperature, weight, or at least doing weight once a day. The others they were definitely doing twice a day, just to, just general obs. So I've kept that going. One of the, um, I'm on Ramapril tablets, um, so therefore my blood pressure, just to keep that you know within a decent range. So coming around in the ICU, my blood pressure was really, really high. And I think it was obviously the natural stresses that the heart's under from the operation and things. So they put me on uh, Ramapril to just kind of keep it more level. And it's been pretty, pretty consistent since. Um, I need to keep an eye on it so that when it drops, um, or if it does drop at all, um, mm -hmm. that potentially start looking at coming off the Ramapril. Um, and getting sort of back into that um, just normal not not having not having it at all and some of that um, for me some of the the higher blood pressure I think was just the environment you know already um, since been monitoring it at home it's been more stable it's been on the lower end of normal which is good but it hasn't dropped into any sort of um, danger areas yet that I'll um, call the doctor and just let them know that they obviously can take me off the Ramapril. Um, so yeah, I do that pretty much every morning. Uh, sometimes I do it twice a day, blood pressure and temperature, but um, pretty much in general, 
first thing in the morning it's my routine just weigh myself blood pressure um, temperature and obviously I do that for breakfast and, and everything else so that's kind of good it's my own sort of observations on myself um, which has been really good uh, weight wise I went in probably five or six kilos heavier than I normally am throughout the year and that was pretty much around um, not being as active as I mentioned in my first video as I had been but probably eating a lot more whether or not that was like stress eating or just we had Christmas and, and other things um, so I lost a lot of that weight anyway over the first few days um, in hospital after the procedure not eating and being in ICU and in high dependency ward as well um, so I've kind of maintained a relatively um, flat flat weight since then um, minus that four or five kilos so I'm fairly happy with that um, and then pretty much from today I'm going to keep a consistent consistent diary of um, what I'm going to eat uh, when I'm going to eat um, and go from there so no major major changes I've had to make at home um, in terms of you know things um, I'm trying to think pretty much everything I've been able to do myself just sometimes if there's like pots or pans for cooking that are like stacked underneath like other stuff um, I'll get a wife to sort of get those out so that you know I'm not having to lift stuff off and things like that uh, but in general you know pretty much everything um, is as normal it's just taking it a bit slower uh, more methodical with what I'm I'm doing and things like that but yeah in general um, yeah yeah everything's good so this was the um, sort of video I wanted to do um, kind of give you guys an update and then what I'll do is like a series of other videos that will be maybe entitled like each day that I was in the hospital or each area so the operation ICU HDU general ward and, and maybe discharge or whatever and try and do whether or not it's daily or weekly kind of updates uh, fitness wise uh, what I'm eating how my INR levels are going so as an update for that I'll do a separate video because it'll be easier but I left the hospital with my INR being 2 2.0 um, they've told me um, they want it between 2 and 3 so ideally 2.5 depending on who you speak to but as long as it as soon as it hit 2 um, I say they kicked me out um, I was on quite a high dosage um, for the last couple of days in hospital I was on about 10 milligrams they discharged me and put me on 7 milligrams of warfarin and um, I had that for Wednesday Thursday night Friday I had my first appointment at the COAG clinic local to me had a test on the COAG check machine and I was 2.2 but they weren't sure if I was on the way up or on the way down from the, the couple of 10 milligrams before I left hospital so they um, called me in this morning so this morning being Monday so I had the Saturday and Sunday um, dosage as well as Friday night at 7 milligrams I went in this morning and I was bang on 2.0 again so I've dropped a little bit so I was obviously on Friday on the way down and um, from those big 10 milligram dosage so they've now put me on alternate dosages so an 8 and a 7 so I'm on 8 milligrams tonight 7 milligrams tomorrow night 8 milligrams afterwards and so on and so forth with my next um, coag clinic being on Friday so hopefully um, it's kind of a little bit higher you know obviously 2 2.0 is a bit too close for comfort and I don't fancy going in on Friday and getting stabbed with more injections but it is what it is um, so I'm, I might go into more detail on um, how I'm gonna cope with warfarin uh, what my diet looks like um, the sort of things I'm eating how I'm checking um, and things like that so that'll be a complete different video in its own right or series of videos um, and again, I'll talk about other bits and pieces um, about the hospital and things like that. But this is kind of just a general update. Two weeks tomorrow will be um, post-op. Again, say, like I say, feel, feel really, really good. I can't uh, reiterate how, how good I feel. Um, obviously, outside of the, the usual sort of the chest, you know, breathing's not 100% in terms of 
Um, I haven't got full capacity back yet. I'm getting shortness of breath still. 100% uh, expected that until I kind of get back up to speed. But all of my vitals are good. You know, my sat, um, saturation levels were checked by the, the nurse on Friday who took my chest strain stitches out. 100% they were. And in hospital, um, certainly when I was on general ward, they didn't drop below 97, 98. So really, really happy with those. Um, so yeah, no issues um, with that. So that's it really for me. That This is a an, say an update. Um, really wanted to do some videos in hospital. I've got some clips that my wife took from the ICU, but I really, really didn't feel up, up to it during the different stages. Um, and hats off to the guys and girls who have done the videos, whether they've been lying in the ICU or in the HDU or whatever, absolutely 100% hats off to you for doing that. Um, for me, I just couldn't think of anything worse than, than doing a video um, there. You, you kind of live in it at a time and uh, you just kind of want to get through what you're going through. But I took so many notes. That was one thing that really, really helped me was I was just writing down everything, almost like a bit of a daily journal, um, just so I can remember what was going on, um, my experiences and things like that. So I'll go over those in, in other videos and things like that. So yeah, um, kind of signing off now. Um, quite long videos, longer than I expected. So uh, God knows what the uh, the other video is going to be like. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks for uh, for listening. Hopefully, hopefully there's at least one one person watching, listening. And if it, like I said in my first video, if it could just help one person who's going for procedure, been through the procedure, or a family member of someone who's going for it or going to go for it um, if I can help just by talking about my experience um, I've achieved something because like I said before I got so much out of the videos that other people have done thanks